Pot of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, a rightly dividing the word of truth. Bible doctrine is more than the physical breath we take. Bible doctrine ought to be number one priority in our life. Bible doctrine has to be the only source wherewith we can realize our true purpose in this life as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Many preachers might have come. Many orators might have raised. Many philosophical thoughts might be thought for you. But if you are not in accord with the word of the Lord, which has been clearly given for us from the original languages of the scripture, even the single word that you spoke or that you are speaking without exegesis is void and null. The reason behind that is consecration. The psalmist says in Psalms 101 verse 2, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. When will thou come unto me, my Lord? I will walk within my house in the integrity of my heart. The problem with the today's Christendom believers, even as well the problem with the Christendom pulpit pastor teachers who are occupying it, they do not even know how to behave wisely unto the God's glory. They do not even know how will Lord come unto them. In fact, even they do not even walk within the law of the house of my Lord in the integrity of their heart. The reason behind that is we are not able to examine ourselves under the light of Bible doctrine, under the broad day of the daylight, but we are still looking around into the dim twilight of the morning, which doesn't even show what exactly is our character, which doesn't even come close to realize the difference between a believer and an unbeliever when they are being led morally into this world. They cannot even come close to realize what they have to do in this earth after salvation that is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone, which is as close to their evolution itself. Many people want to tell to them that if they work good works, then only they are going to be saved. If they are living a moral, spiritual life, which what spirituality it is for them, we do not know. Then only they are going to have the eternal life. Some, some, in fact, even assure them the eternal life because they have been baptized into the water baptism which is there in the water tank. Why so many errors? The reasons which are ample to be delineated. Not only answering back Zakir Naik, I have taken the only one reason of the fifth phrase which my Lord spoke on the cross. When he dogmatically told, I am thirsty, he was fulfilling the phrase of Psalms 69. It is what a privilege for us to realize that Lord Jesus Christ, even to the point of his death, was fulfilling the law. He was quoting the scripture so that he should, it should be as a only power source to survive on the cross. The same joy, reverence, absorption, realization has been demanded on our part as today we become the Alekeniketesis, new spiritual species in Christ. Many people fail to understand the dispensations so that they cannot even come close to realize what it is, how it is, how it is and where it is. When Apostle Peter was writing about Apostle Paul, the testimony concerning to the fact some of the things which he has written are very hard to be understood. They wrestle themselves for their own destruction. The reason behind that is they do not know how to come to learn this truth. It doesn't mean to say they are unlearned. It means to say they are untaught. 
because there is a procedure wherewith you approach the Lord in this dispensation. The dispensation wherewith the believer is a royal priest for Christ. A believer has the privilege to confess his sins directly to God the Father, not requiring a mediator as in the Old Testament time. Why this believer has been given this privilege? Because the temple of the Lord is you, that is, a believer in Christ. The Shekinah glory indwells in you. The noun is being formed in you. The Trinity indwells in you. In fact, even Apostle Paul reprimands them, telling to the fact, Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Temple in the sense of the Shekinah glory, the Ark of the Covenant, if we could imagine, which was kept behind the veil before the captivity of Babylon of 587 BC. After the Babylon captivity, there was been worshipping by keeping a stone. But when the Ark of the Covenant was present there, if you could imagine how horrible it would be for them to enter into that Ark of the Covenant, and the early ones only the high priest would enter. And that high priest would return if their sins would have been agreed by Lord to be forgiven. If Lord wouldn't have accepted their sins, even that year was a waste unto them. So they need to wait for one long year to confess their sins. Why is it? Teaching them the purity, the integrity, and the character essence of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Telling to them what it is to live a life of jealousness unto Christ. What it is to show forth unto them, even though he is teaching them the simple shadow of Christology, rituals, and number two, exegesis. People were perfect in the rituals because they could survive in, upon their income, if, that, if not upon their salary. But when it comes to the second point for exegesis, there were no enough good preachers for them to teach. Because this is just a shadow. We need to appreciate ourselves. We need to pass down this information to our children. <laughs> but they literally failed unto their work, kept upon their shoulders. So yearly once the high priest would enter, and if the sins were been forgiven, they would have a feast for seven days and then walk into their walk of life. But that's not the point in today's Christendom. Every believer doesn't have so much of time to stay away for one year so that a priest could come and pray for you in a form. But we have in the church age, royal high priest is Lord Jesus Christ. We are having our priesthood, and we exercise it under our believership. The reason is that we cannot stay away from the fellowship of the Lord. The reason behind that is the angelic conflict has been intensified. The gears have been shifted, and the gear is in the top gear now. Satan knew very well, if in the church age, the believers will come to know what is Bible doctrine, they will eventually come to know what is the position in the, at the moment of positional sanctification in Christ when they have been baptized into the royal family of God because it is the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to unite them into that union of Christ. And Satan knew very well that this ordinary believer is positionally superior than the chief fallen angel known as Satan. In fact, even Satan knows very well the privileges and the polytema one, if not the toga varalis, if not the mystery doctrine given into the hands of this ordinary believer can do extraordinary by putting an impact because this believer has been indwelled by Lord God the Holy Spirit and Lord God the Holy Spirit is, it is the mentor, it is the guide, it is the paraclete teacher for this ordinary believer which energizes his activated human spirit so that this human spirit can have a perfect relationship with Christ and this perfection of relationship with Christ is what you have to note the day-by-day -day walk in Christ today you have obtained Bible doctrine whether it is yielding to the imperishable weight in the sight of eternal reward or it is not even going above the ceiling where you are preaching your word of the Lord every day is accountable for us in Christ 
And how is it that you make sure that each and every word you speak is an imperishable weight into the Lord's eternal glory? When you realize the systematic procedure which has been taught for us to learn, a systematic approach which demands on part of the believer to know what it meant to say, the dispensation and the things that have been passed out into the realm of pre-salvation and the post-salvation since, and the pre-canon period and the post-canon period. What are the spiritual gifts God has given to us to exercise these simple facts? People never realize the truth. People are not able to endure sound doctrine. In fact, even people are so much indifference towards the truth. Various denominations leading them simple principles but putting away which is the most to be done in this earth while he's still alive. And making them to perform those things which are not even worth, which ought not to be done, is a top priority led by Satan to them. Because Satan knew very well it will be not only exposed when you know the doctrine, Satan knew very well what are the depths of it, when you will really understand the, the word of the Lord under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. Then you can plan yourself very well. A skillful execution of your life, which is a royal way of life into the Lord's glory, which has been given to us, that each and every day we walk for his glory. And that walking for glory demands to be led by the Spirit. To be living in the Spirit. To be controlled of the Spirit. And that controlment of the Spirit is not by your works, by your penance, by your deeds. Or by your XYZ activities which you can think you are performing under the energy of your flesh. Those works have been done by a simple act of faith, by using rebound 1 John 1 9, which is a grace provision to get back into fellowship, to get back from your dungeon into the divine palace. And when you are in the divine palace, you can use the assets which Lord God the Holy Spirit has designed and kept for us in eternity past. And those divine assets are very much accountable for us to understand in depth, in truth. Because without those divine assets, the Old Testament people perished. But they had a higher assets, a rituality, when they could keep those ordinances, they would have been practicing the word of the Lord. But in the New Testament, we have this power, kept in the earthen vessel, that is we. The power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being indwelled in us. The reason behind that is not to get compromised with the worldly thoughts, with the fleshy thoughts, with the false doctrine of Satan. The reason behind that is you sit and dig and read the word of the Lord from the original languages of the scripture. And this eternal weight of glory is what we are looking into. Need to be searched diligently day by day. Whether today is the worth for God's glory or not. Are we walking or are we living? Are we executing the protocol plan of God or not? Because, dear brethren, you need to behave yourself wisely in the sight of the Lord. So many people rustle the scriptures, particularly the teachings of Apostle Paul, because those have been penned by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it to such a great extent. Even the Old Testament scriptures were not even been given this thought. They might have come very close to the point of tribulation. And when they come, they never go to the millennium, but they never knew what it was in the church age. But it is in the New Testament itself, the doctrine has been revealed and kept for us. And this New Testament doctrine has given to us the new 
procedures for this alakaina ketesis, new spiritual species in Christ. But then too, they were in the Old Testament time, they were teaching them the depth of the scripture in truth. Ritually. And even as such, the more they can get into the point of view. Exegetically. So that the one who is handling the word of the truth can make it a point of consideration to them. What they are teaching, what they are making them to learn is absolutely true. Even when the priest used to give the incense, not a grain of the incense was lost because not a grain was entrusted even into the hands of the priests. All went up to God. Even a minute grain of incense would go to the Lord, not been given into the hands of a priest. How much more the grain of word of the Lord given into our responsibility of our shoulders if it truly possesses the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, I'm telling you. When those priests were not being spared to handle that grain of incense, how much more it would be for you and me to handle that grain of incense than to Bible doctrine clearly delineated and kept for us and given to us to preach the word in season and out of season to be prepared. So that we can understand what is the truth behind that in depth. So that we can become an ensemble like Apostle Paul. Why can't we trace the paths of Apostle Paul and try to live like Apostle Paul? Why can't you choose this narrow road rather than choosing that broad road? The narrow road which leads a no way that is a point of returning back, no U-turn. That's the road of holiness unto the Lord. Because that's the only road, a right way to be done in a right manner. That's the protocol plan of God which be, be executed only under that one clause. A right thing to be done in a right way is what Lord demands for us. A right thing done in a wrong way is wrong. A wrong thing done in a right way is also wrong. Ultimately, a wrong thing done in a wrong way is absolutely wrong. The right thing is to learn Bible doctrine. The right way is a procedure for you to be rebound. That is 1 John 1 9. And that right way demands that you to be controlled of the Spirit so that you cannot grieve Lord God the Holy Spirit, not squelch Lord God the Holy Spirit, but rather walk in the Spirit so that when you are living in the Spirit. This law is given for us as church age believers alone. But we are wasting to the core maximum than those Old Testament ensembles who were longing for this control and power. That's why Moses told for Eldad and Badad, Eldad and Meldad, warning Joshua, telling to the fact, do not stop them. I wish the entire camp could prophesy like those two men. And that fulfillment of the prophecy is now for us in the church age. Every believer has been indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, with a purpose, with a meaning, with a definition. So that we, the pastor teachers who are handling the word of the truth, when we handle it accurately, we are looking to the point that each and every grain of incense is going to heaven to the Lord. That means each and every word which has been given for us, by not diminishing the truth, we are preaching it with accuracy for Bible doctrine and for His glory. And that will become an imperishable eternity record. But we are trampling down the word of the truth by our own feet. The reasons are many which we have been delineating. The fifth exemplification of the fifth phrase of my Christ on the cross. I am thirsty. When you realize what is it that you thirst for the word of the Lord. Even the minute word of Christ's glory will go for nothing. You will never let it to go, just perish like that. Telling to the fact, what is there in this article, what is there in this preposition, or what is there in this verb or noun or adverb. But you take to the depth of a point because it is Christ's word. And you thoroughly search it, scan it, dig it, learn it. Because even that word has a meaning for you. Because that word gives for you a clear cut of plan. When you're playing puzzles, if there are one to hundred pieces of puzzles and you need to assemble them, 
if you miss a minute part of it, maybe a number 99, or even if not, maybe number 56 or 77, something like that. And if you want to show the picture, will the puzzle be completed? Those pieces of 56, 77, and 99 are required for you to solve that puzzle, isn't it? Exactly each and every word of the Lord has a meaning penned for us from the original languages of the scripture. And that's what we work for Christ's glory, not even diminishing a word. Jeremiah was been born to tell diminution, not a word. Apostle Paul summarizes us and tells to us very clearly. I am pure from your blood because I didn't even shun to declare the entire counsel of the Lord. I have given you everything what has been given upon me to tell to you. Now we, the preachers occupying the pulpit, entire Bible doctrine from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 has been given to us. And you think your weekly ones of sermon which you are not having even a dig of a thought from the original languages of the word. You are showing forth Lord's glory. I certainly think not. Because Christ's glory demands on part of us. Not even a single word of him should let it go just for useless work. Or should let it go for nothing. Each and every word has a meaning in the original Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic. Each and every word has a depth of information for us to communicate. And when you will communicate if you are not having time to sit and study. How will you come to appreciate the Christ's glory and his jealousness and his honor and his integrity? Until or unless you give time for it. To sit and study, to dig, to learn, to understand. Demanding on part of us that we need to fulfill 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly handling the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth, or rightly dividing the word of truth. When you will do that, until unless you start studying the word of the truth. You think your cheap gimmicks are more required for you to be done, like those miracles, healings, or tongues? which were before the pre-canon period. Even the tongue's purpose was from AD 30 to AD 70, evangelizing the Jews, telling to them, this is Messiah, believe in him. But they failed. That's what the destruction of the Roman temple. Because even though Christ was being crucified on the cross, without having proper consecration, the veil, even though that has been torn and led them to the holiest of the holy place, once again they started to construct that veil, and once again they started to freshly crucify the Lord again and again by repeating those sacrifices, repeated and told for us in the book of Hebrews as well as Galatians, telling to the fact, once again they have been crucifying Christ on the cross because of those ritual practices which Lord nailed it to the cross. And this people... Exactly, they are repeating in today's Christendom. Those pre-canon period spiritual gifts, which were temporary, are being still into use today by such kind of a morons. By the charismatic crowd, the Pentecostal crowd, and whichever crowd you name it, they have it. The reason behind that, no proper enlightenment in the Bible doctrine. No proper knowledge to understand what is the truth. Just letting go the Christ glory for nothing. Replacing think themselves thinking that if they could not even simply present the gospel to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they think Lord replaces them with their miracle and forgives them. What is the point of view that you are talking dear brethren? And whom you are kidding with? You're kidding maybe the congregation that is following you. But you cannot kid the Lord. The post-salvation spiritual gifts, the gift of a pastor teacher and God's ideal shepherd being the person who is a teaching pastor. And it is pastor hyphen teacher. It is not pastors and some teachers as wrongly translated in the KJV. It is one word. It is a teaching pastor. That's it. And that's the final verdict of Lord's communicating vehicle on this earth. 
and that Lord communicating vehicle is the church, the church being the ground and pillar of truth. The church is a place where the manifold wisdom of God has to be taught and the angels are desiring to look into it. And the pulpit is the place what you are going to preach from the world and the New Testament getting together through exegesis, categorical and allegorical study because even the angels are desiring to learn the truth from you. But what are you now? Uh, replacing the doctrine with useless and worthless talks and arguments and genealogies. Arising speculations which are not to be considered in your mind because a believer believes in his doctrinal tenant in the resurrection of the Lord and as he is going to resurrect. And there is no speculation for you to understand. When he is rising, whether he will have hairs on his leg or not. How many hairs he had on the thumb or not. This is what your discussion is at the pulpits rather than preaching the word of the Lord for accuracy, building them up and raising them for the spiritual resurrection to the status of spiritual maturity so that the people should learn doctrine, should apply doctrine, should grow in doctrine, should understand doctrine. Rather than that, these foolish people, they are speculating to the point. They are speculating telling to the point. If Lord will appear, is it the resurrection for the body or is the resurrection for the spirit? A resurrection is an accomplished fact that will last high in the Greek. Salvation is an accomplished fact that will last high in the Greek. As you cannot work out your own salvation by following your gimmicks of good deeds and false deeds, which are ministers' cloths. So it is you cannot work out your own resurrection. It is the grace provision Lord will do you. But in between these both stages, there is one that is not a spiritual life, which you need to work out. Though you are positionally superior in the sight of the Lord, reaching to the status quo of spiritual adulthood, standing superior in the chief fallen angel known as Satan, experientially you are still a spiritual infant. Your spiritual infancy has to be changed taking from the sincere milk, uh, rising to the bread, consuming strong meat. How will you take it? And why is the status quo of such kind of a spiritual growth delineated for us in the word of the Lord? So that it is a day-by-day -day process. This entire doctrine which has been kept upon us, it is Lord who is going to work. And Lord is going to complete us, which has begun the good work in us. That is His mighty power which energizes our activated human spirit. And that mighty power uses only one sufficient source to the growth to energize, or only one source to energize your activated human spirit, and that one source is Bible doctrine. So these people whom they are kidding with, giving them false speculations and false deception use of those spiritual gifts which have been seized and effective in force only the permanent spiritual gifts that is pastor teacher teaching pastor whose duty is to exegete the word isolate the word categorize the word these men are replacing the word of the lord with their cheapest gimmicks of all time Like those cheapest gimmicks which have been used from 517 BC in the Ark of the Covenant place. Not able to realize that there was a stone and the high priest would go and sprinkle blood on the stone just to keep them false image. Exactly that is what it is happening in today's Christian Dham. The Ark of the Covenant now what it is the word of the Lord in the church. When there was no Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle or in the temple, there was no presence of the Lord. So when there is no word of Lord preached in the church, there is no God's glory to be taught, nor God's rule, God's ordinances, God's status, which is Lord Jesus Christ established for us to preach from Bible doctrine. As in place of that Ark of the Covenant, stone is kept and ritually they are following that idol. Even in today's Christendom, the pulpit is been followed by these cheapest gimmicks of all time, the spiritual gifts used before 
the pre-canon period. And the post-canon period, the permanent spiritual gifts, they use it as a veneer to cover as the gift they have like a pastor teacher. In fact, even sometimes we doubt whether they really have the gift of a pastor teacher for communicating the word of the truth or not. Because if they have the gift of the pastor teacher, because Christ is our lion, even we also shine forth like lion. We fulfill the role of Christ. That's why Apostle Paul told the attitude of Christ, let it be in you as well what he had in him while he was approaching the cross. He never compromised. Though Satan tempted him many times, even at the prayer he said, my spirit is willing but my flesh is not. That is the flesh what we have been given. And Adam knew very well what was the reason behind that of the flesh. That's why this flesh is not workable unto Christ. That's why you have been embodied with the spirit. Spirit and soul is what you think. It is not what a man performs, it is what he thinks that is going to perform. So Christianity begins at thinking, not with emotion. Flesh reacts to the emotion, but Christianity reacts to thinking, to Bible doctrine. But the contrary today in today's Christendom is absolutely reversed. Christianity is responding to the emotion and the flesh is responding to the thinking. What a sheer art of a blasphemy it is for us to realize this truth. People not able to realize the responsibility kept upon their shoulders while they are working in the pulpits. People are not able to realize that they are preaching sheer rats in their teachings. People are not able to realize that oratory or XYZ, replacing the word of the Lord with miracles, healings or tongues, is not the order of the pulpit, is not the government rule of the word of the Lord. But then too, crowd is following them. Lord, help you at the judgment seat of Christ. The crowd do follow because they do not want to be grazed by the knowledge and by the use of intelligence by Lord God the Holy Spirit. That's why the people, their negative attitude to sincerely love the word of the Lord or to even have a volition in their heart for a prayer to search them diligently makes them not to realize this mystery doctrine of the church age. In fact, even the mystery doctrine of the church age is being buried in the pulpits because the average minister who is occupying the pulpit never knows that there is something known as mystery doctrine for the church age. Because his mentor has not taught him. Because in return his mentor has not been guided by Lord God the Holy Spirit to have his eye enlightened into the word and understand what is that word known as dispensation. And these people coming to the ministry to survive their livelihood to raise their children upon the offerings given by the church, to fulfill their lust pattern, to fulfill their pride of life, to fulfill whatsoever they think they can acquire by begging money, by raising money, like those management skills which they have been used in today's Christendom. And telling them, you have a sure way to heaven only when you offer me. Telling them, when you come to my ministry and sponsor for one of my programs in the TV, the problems between your mother and you will be solved. Your wife and your mother can be together. Such kind of a sheer raps have been taught into this Christendom. And you know what? People are also interested to give to such kind of a fools and morons not able to realize that they have not learned any word from the such kind of an idiotic person, but having that false assurance that they will be happy only when they give. And that's blind faith. Not having an emotion to realize with expression of thought. Just having an emotion in his word and going for him. I do not worry how much they earn, what they do, what they're not. 
what is their fate into the hell or whether their fate is there for the things wherewith Lord demands for them. It will be worthless upon worthless, woody and stubble. Because no believer will go to hell because he believes upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But the only thing which I am worried is that there is not a man to stand in the gap to take it into his heart for the glory of the Lord is being perished by such kind of a false teachings by such kind of a false crowd by such kind of a false speculations of the defunct use of the false spiritual gifts that is what it pains my heart and let those perish, let them perish that's what it says in the book of Revelation 22:11. Let the one want to be righteous, let him be righteous. Let the one want to be unjust, let him go still for the unjust. But let the one who wants to look into the quality of Bible doctrine, let him go for super quality of Bible doctrine. That ought to be the worst quoted there. But we are not having even members searching for this quality of ice concept, which is isogical, categorical, lexical study, or delineating the word of the Lord. What are the reasons behind that? Failure to communicate this truth. Because this truth has been dead and buried in the pulpits of this average clock men who are more worse than that Zacharyak. Though he's a dichotomy fool, these are trichotomous morons and idiots, reckless, senseless, and extravagant to the core, not able to realize that we are dealing with the Lord's word, and Lord's word demands. A narrow path, a narrow path of imperishable records of eternity to be kept on each and every word that we speak and preach. That's why Psalmist was praying, Lord, <coughs> help me how to behave myself wisely into thy glory. Lord, only when you guide upon me, or how is it that I come unto thee? Then I can show forth with all of my integrity that, Lord, I love you. That there is not a term of integrity in today's Christendom. Believers are not having that integrity to learn the word of the truth. Preachers are not having that integrity to honor Bible doctrine to that core. But such kind of a false speculations, morons who are rising to the core, to the maximum, want only one thing to be understood. And that one thing what they want whether I am happy today by fulfilling my lust or not. Whether I am happy today by giving them false assurance or not. Jumping around, dancing around with their idiotic songs. Telling them the blood of Jesus will come upon you and he will be saved and you will be healed. Experience this healing. Whom they are kidding did. Such kind of an extravagant dogs. not able to realize the truth coming and approaching the pulpit. Falsely blaspheming my Lord's glory and perishing the word of the Lord for nothing. The mystery doctrine of the church age is the only valuable asset of all time. The believer can never enjoy it. The, past, the Old Testament saints can never get it. The tribulation or the millennium or eschatological event saints can never get it. It is only you and I as an ordinary believer, though being born into the family of Gentile, now we are the royal family of church. We have been united, baptized under the Lord God of the Holy Spirit to get into thy ministry to known as royal family of Christ. And this royal family demands royal food. That royal food has to be cooked and served by the royal chef. That royal chef is Lord Jesus Christ, training us under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, preparing and giving us which is required for us when we are able to meet the standards of Lord's glory to the maximum when in our integrity we are able to stand for the truth. We are not able to have that integrity at all. How will you realize that you require royal food and a royal chef? A royal way of Christian life. When you have been dead and buried once again into those cheap gimmicks. Raised by such kind of a morons in today's Christendom. 
the morons of these fundamental crowds, legalistical crowds, the Pentecostal crowds, a working miracles crowd, a working healing crowds, speaking in tongues crowds. No doubt morally they are also working like those unbelievers who are going to go to hell. But you know what? That unbeliever is far more superior than such kind of a moron, moral believer who is going to go to heaven. The reason is the grace provision of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The other part of the reason is they are never able to realize what it is to come out of that entanglement in the bondage of the depths of Satan in today's Christendom. Because Satan wants to obscure them from the truth. Satan never wants to tell to them what is their fate. If they could know the truth, the truth shall set them free. But then too they want to follow such kind of a trance. And Satan knew very well that these false agents are helping themselves to support Satan. Because Satan never worries till that person is being used such kind of a false speculations by calling them miracles or healings or tongues, by raising them such kind of a thoughts which is not even essential for them to understand, or they can never even come close to realize this truth. Just telling to them such and such, such and such, such and such. But when a minister starts to preach the word of the truth, when the minister being prepared from the original languages of the scripture, then Satan gives attention to you. Rises your family against you. Rises the world against you. Because it doesn't want the world to know the truth. It doesn't want the world to understand its true character. It doesn't want the world to realize that this believer in Christ, in this unique dispensation of the church age, termed as Alekainiketes' new spiritual spaces, is positionally superior than the chief fallen angel known as Satan. And experientially he can reach to that status quo of superiorship by daily intake of Bible doctrine alone. Because that is the only source where Lord God the Holy Spirit energizes your activated human spirit. And how long you want to be away from this truth, Lord help you. And how long you want to perish each and every word of the Lord without even looking for Christ's glory into it, Lord help you. But each and every one will have the work, what we have done in our body, in Christ. Even if that moment, you will realize what you have done was not at all. And what you ought to be done, you have not at all done. Think upon those thoughts. Because it is we being entrusted as a pastor, teacher, bona fide gift given by the head of the church, which is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to handle his word accurately. The Dorio and Karatis may be the gift of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the gift of eternal life, and one, at least one spiritual gift at the moment of salvation given to you. And that spiritual gift, either a gift of help, hospitality, evangelism, or witnessing. Because witnessing and ambassadorship is a common realm for us given to us. But evangelism or the pastor teacher is most essential for us to understand. Or the gift of administration for the management of the edifying of the church. To reach this mystery doctrine to the millions in the world. How to manage them, that may be a gift for you given to you by Lord God the Holy Spirit. Your singing has nothing to do with Lord. Your music playing has nothing to do with the Lord. Music was the chief source given by Satan. And today's Christendom, Satan is using that music crowd to the maximum, not even able to have a difference. What is that he gypsy? What is those things that have been playing today in the music as if four or five dogs tail together so that when they're tied, the way they scream, that's the music in today's Christendom. Not having a proper order of worship. As such, the order of worship given by David, when he was telling for, at the end of each verse, Selah, to the music director, to the music choir. There was an order of worship. Today people may say, we have advanced technological instruments of music to play. Your advanced technological instruments 
are also being used by Satan to play into the other part of the world. But you are a believer in Christ. There is an order, there is a procedure. And when you sing, it's better you sing Bible verses. Genesis chapter 1, start singing. Because that is the only valid source of information to be given to this world. Not as if you perform your own videos and tell to them, this is what I have done. And when you find those videos, those videos are not even away from the musical world of film line. We cannot find the difference between the musical world of film line and the musical world of spiritual world. That's what they call in Christianity. If you cannot see the tag on the TV and if you could realize that this is God TV, then you will realize, okay, this is God TV. If not, you will think either it is a rock TV or something like that. That is the standard of singing today in today's Christian world. Or you will ask the question, is it the God TV, what we are listening now? Share what of blasphemy into that field as well. Where there is no proper revelation of the word of the Lord, there the people will perish. That proper revelation is teaching and exegeting Bible doctrine from its isagogical categorical study. Thoroughly making every believer to be furnished for good works. Good of intrinsic value. Because that good works will lead for you in the imperishable records of eternity in the heaven. So which way you go, that is left to you. All is duly estimated by Christ. And it has been designed for the responsibility kept upon that pastor teacher who alone could value it aright. If the responsibility of the pastor teacher is not able to value it, the true source of right of information, then what is the point that you handle the word of the truth with wrong source of information? You can only value it when you have that designed duly estimated duty by Lord for you at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. The priest in the Old Testament time would exegete the word, not the Nathanims. So the duly designed estimated duty of the priest was to exegete the word. But here the Nathanims are coming and thinking that they have the duty and they are not doing that work are right because they cannot value the depth of the importance of that word from the original languages of the world. This is true in every stage of today's Christendom. Though the Christ precious life has been down here laid for us with an example that it is the narrow gate that we need to choose, that it is the truth of integrity that we need to honor from exegetical, categorical, mythological study, people are not able to reach to this end. But when you reach to that end, of your life and see the climax setting to the fact that you sold Christ for 30 pieces of silver and another said cursed upon himself I know him not and all forsook him and fled and the world nailed him at the cross between two, two thieves And then Lord showed to the entire universe that the one who was there into that narrow road who stick on to him though the disciples left him though he was being sold for 30 pieces of silver though on whom Christ would build a church he has told to Peter he said curse upon me I don't know who is that man and the world which told hallelujah before one week when he could enter into the Jerusalem. The same world told crucify him on the cross. And that too between those two thieves. When we are thieves in the sight of the Lord. Either you are a repentant thief. Who changed his mind and said Lord today. Lord remember me when thy kingdom comes. And many speculations of that passage as well. Where people will say. This thief will rise when the second kingdom comes. 
in return the thief was asking in his terms because he knew very well that he used to be the Messiah, the King. On a repentant heart he says, Lord, help me or remember me when you shall appear again as the King. Because those crucifagum would take for one week. Some of them would be alive still for three or four days. So he thought he would be with him. So when he comes as a king, you please rescue me for my life. Then Lord says, today you shall be with me in paradise. At the place of the abode where Abraham's bosom was kept. And now after the first resurrection of my Christ, being the first fruit, he took and vacated this paradise. So the remembering of the thief in his kingdom is to the kingdom of heaven, which he is right now because of his faith in Christ. So even we are thieves. And which way you support? Like that unrepented thief or the repented thief? Even the same question posed to ask Zachariah as well. The world is being called as thieves by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And which way you are choosing? Some have been chosen to God by faith alone in Christ alone, but then to their continuing the thief traits in their life. Like these pastor teachers who are robbing the word of the Lord and its glory, not able to give its proper place. And some are exactly like this Zakir Naik and the unrepented thief who, are, who is into the hell, not able to realize that God's glory. So the disciples forsook him. Peter took curse upon him. And the world nailed to the cross between two thieves. Then to God showed to the universe how much he differed from the thoughts of all men by placing the crucified one in the form of resurrection on the throne of the majesty in the heavens, sitting at right hand of Lord God the Father. That will be the way when you follow for the narrow path. As an unprofitable slave, that which is your duty to do, that you have been doing. And the more the people fail to realize the simple truth, the more they are walking in the broad way of such kind of a false speculations. True Christianity is the outflow of the life of Christ in the believer's practical ways. And this is most precious to God. Though it may be lost upon an unbelieving world and even upon a professing church, there is not a moment of the life of Christ in the believer, not an expression of what he is, not the smallest manifestation of his grace that does not ascend directly as sweet incense to the throne of God. It may not attract the notice or elect the appalls of this world. It may not get a place in the records of men, but it gets a place which goes straight to God, up in the heaven. And this is enough for a faithful heart who exegetes the word by valuing God's that is of Christ, and that exegesis is required, and nothing else is required, nothing more nor less. There may be much that looks like service, that is like much show, much noise, much that men make a great ado about, which we are noticing in today's Christendom. Following the principles of Manihin, clapping the same way he claps, dancing around the same way he dances, and not even able to realize what they're talking is not tongues, that is a and gastromythos demon controlling their vocal cords. Not even coming to the point to realize that these false speculations of miracles or healings or tongues have been totally seized. And if there is anything that is God directly does to that believer when he prays, because God has given such kind of a resistance to this mortal body, that we can become greater than the superhumans. But the way these people are rising, much show, much noise, much that men make a great ado about. But nothing goes up to the throne 
nothing is entered into the imperishable records of eternity. But that which is the fruit of the life of Christ in the soul, the fruit being added to your account, learnt only through the exegetical Bible doctrine, is what which has an imperishable record in the eternity. So may God, Lord God, the Holy Spirit lead us into the experiential sanctification of understanding these things and bring forth in us, day by day, a brighter and fuller manifestation of Christ to the glory of God the Father and to His Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Since the introduction of the tape has been too long, we shall have a word of prayer in the privacy of our priesthood by the confession of our sins so that the things that are continuing in the dispensation divine outline of history particularly which you have been noticing in yesterday's tape escrow contract blessings for time and for eternity wherewith the passage is mentioned in second timothy 2 5 second timothy 4 7 through 8 followed by james 1 12 describe desire for truth love for god strength of character a remarkable stability, perseverance, motivation, momentum, and happiness. Such qualities of the inner person are escrow blessings for time. Because this escrow blessing is supported by the basic capacities of soul developed on the way to maturity, invariably these traits are the escrow blessings for time. Belong to the believers whom scripture identifies as recipients of eternal rewards or crowns. Their escrow blessings for eternity. And distribution of both categories of escrow blessings for time and for eternity depends on the believer's execution of the protocol plan of God in time. The precondition for receiving escrow blessings dramatizes God's objective for the church age believer on earth. So to learn Bible doctrine, to gain spiritual momentum, to growing up in doctrine and attaining maturity is the only way that we can become the recipients of those escrow blessings for time as well as for eternity. In other words, while you are working for your escrow blessing in time, that will be rewarded even for you in the heaven. So we need to come and love and glorify Christ. And to come and love to glorify Christ, we need to confess our sins through 1 John 1 9 and get back into fellowship in the privacy of our priesthood by simple prayer, prayer and then coming and looking into the subject, the undisturbed or distributed blessings and the glory of God. We are grateful, Heavenly Father, for the privilege that are given to us to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit enlightens the things that are going to study, so that, Lord Jesus Christ, might be glorified. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. So, the undistributed blessings and the glory of God. At this moment, each believer has an escrow account in heaven with his name on it. And these are the believers who have failed to execute the protocol plan of God. So God has given us such kind of a great wealth. They are showing much show, much wine, and much noise, and much ado things which are there given and added to them. But they are not able to show the true glory and the worth of the Lord. So, but not every believer takes distribution of those blessings. Ignorance of Bible doctrine means ignorance of divine assets, which guarantees failure to use those assets. Failure to consistently utilize divine assets constitutes failure to execute the protocol plan of God, which means the believer cannot reach spiritual maturity. If there is no maturity, then there is no capacity for blessings. Therefore, no escrow blessings for time and no escrow blessings for eternity as told in 1 Corinthians 3, 11-15. This does not affect his salvation, but his neglect or rejection of Bible doctrine makes him a spiritual loser. There is no execute, there is no excuse for failure to execute the protocol plan of God. God faithfully supplies logistical grace to winner and loser alike, providing more than ample opportunity for the loser to recover him, his momentum, and renew his advance. Equal privilege and equal opportunity are facts of the Christian way of life, and the escrow blessings themselves are, are irrevocably and imperishable realities. If a believer is a spiritual loser, he is so by his own volition, and volition is next as to his own soul, whether he has been given the top priority to learn Bible doctrine, or whether he is wasting his time not to learn and to give top priority for Bible doctrine. A loser stops being a loser when he starts using rebound and begins to learn and relearn Bible doctrine. A recovery of spiritual momentum is not easy, but it will never be easier than at present. A recovery can begin in any spiritual condition in which the loser finds himself there is no reason to wait there is nothing to wait for and much to lose if the loser does not recover his personal inheritance of escrow blessings will remain 
undistributed and that's the title undistributed blessings and the glory of God it will be unreceived on deposit in heaven forever at the resurrection of the church the loser will receive his resurrection body and will enjoy perfect happiness in heaven but he will not receive his astral blessings for eternity as told in 1st Corinthians 3 15 they will remain on deposit forever as a momentum as a monument to lost opportunity and as undeniable evidence of God's grace in spite of man's negative Volition as told in Ephesians 1 3, Ephesians 3 10, and 1 Peter 1 3 to 4. God was glorified by irrevocably giving escrow blessings to each believer before the foundation of the world, as told in Ephesians 1 4, Colossians 3 24, and 1 Peter 1 4. God is glorified to the maximum by the distribution of these escrow blessings to the spiritual winner in time and eternity. Describing God at the beginning of Ephesians 1 3, the Greek adjective eulogatas has been translated blessed, and that but this word actually means worthy of prayer and glorification in the same verse the verb yugalao means to bless furthermore the cognate noun eulogia is used for the believers blessings blessed bless and blessings this dramatic use of greek cognate words indicates an essential interconnection these blessings are the means of god's glorification he is glorified by blessing us the principle is that the first thing god did for us placing spiritual special blessings in escrow established the means of glorifying him god's desire that we receive our escrow blessings could not be expressed more emphatically than what we are studying now so what do we conclude obviously asceticism is not the christian way of life as told in colossians 1 20 to 23 but neither is aimless undisciplined lawlessness as told in 2 Timothy 2.5 the church age believer has a destiny he glorifies God by utilizing divine assets so that he grows spiritually and acquires capacity to enjoy his astral blessings God created astral blessings for every believer of every dispensation but the greater extent of the church age believers portfolio makes even his astral blessings unique we come now to an exceedingly valuable item in the royals believer portfolio that is the blessings apart from those of all other dispensations the reason behind that why we are taking this undistributed blessings for the glory of the lord is that if the loser does not recover that his if the loser does not learn bible doctrine or once again relearn the word of the lord the procedure of rebound the procedure of being controlled of lord god the holy spirit because the recovery of spiritual momentum is not easy but it will never be easier than at present because if you die there is no way that you can go and understand the escrow contract in time because this undistributed blessings which has been given for us in the greek cognate words like eulogotas eulogia and eulogoia wherewith we have the greek adjective that means to say blessed too blessed and as well as worthy of praise and glorification and the blessings which has been given for us cannot be expressed more emphatically than saying to the fact for us that we need to not to become like a loser believer in christ but rather we need to recover the personal inheritance of escrow blessings which remain undistributed and received on deposit in heaven forever because at the resurrection of the church the loser will receive his resurrection body and will enjoy perfect happiness in heaven but he will not receive the escrow blessings for eternity and that's a great failure for us and there is no reason for us to wait once again into such kind of a sure of theology wherewith the people are following with miracles healings or tongues and rising such kind of a speculations of heresy of the false spiritual gifts and obscuring from the truth because satan knows very well in the first strategy see that none will believe upon christ if by mistake if they're believing in christ or if by the god's plan they're believing in christ see that by any means they are not able to get to understand the doctrine that's why it replaces doctrine with all the emotions it wants all the things to be done to you it wants all the sheer ups of teachings raised following Benny Hinn or following XYZ or following Zakir Naik or whatsoever they think so that they cannot become close to the word of the truth in fact even they will never even have the words of the Lord spoken on the cross except once in the year during the Good Friday which they think but it is not Good Friday the tradition to be refuted it is Good Wednesday and that's the way wherewith people fail to understand and they are still following the rituals of this worldism which the christendom has wrongly established by not having a proper knowledge of bible doctrine from the original word and even as such it has become a so great a hurdle for us to realize that these men are not able to correct themselves and come out of those ritual practices of good friday and even the ministers are supporting for good friday because good friday followed by saturday then they can think sunday three days we can have holiday in enjoyment of our governmental rest that is not the way it is good wednesday the true great sabbath 
path which you have been covered in the previous time as well they have their importance they have their significance so that we when we learn the truth from the original languages of the scriptures then we can understand what we are doing where we are doing and why is the consecration required on part of us because that well when it has been told and the resurrection and and the aliveness of the holiness which has been showed for us exactly is what the flesh is our veil which we need to tear out and the holiness of the lord to be found in us that is the holiness of lord god the holy spirit being manifested to the world and how long we know we want to keep that veneer of the flesh in our hearts because that veneer of the flesh rejects bible doctrine the veneer of the flesh uses towards for negative volition towards bible doctrine it doesn't give time for us to understand the veneer of the flesh seeks for emotion seeks for enjoyment seeks for all such kind of a things but doctrine so we need to break out as lord as lord tore the veil we need to break down this veil of the flesh and look into concentration under the controlling power ministry of lord god the holy spirit and desire his holiness which we can learn and apply and grow up only when we learn bible doctrine so recovery of spiritual momentum is not at all easy but it will never be easier than at present because today is the day for you to repent to change your mind and come back and to recover into the words of thought of bible doctrine but the people are not interested to come and to learn the words of bible doctrine A recovery can begin in any spiritual condition in which the loser finds himself but the grace provision of lord since they never have ear to hear to come and understand what is the reason behind that if they could today repent their mind and come to understand the knowledge of bible doctrine today will be the day for them the day of salvation then too they are not able to come and to recover for that spiritual condition in which the loser can find itself when he can recover the reasons are that the enough minister who has been occupied for him to tell he himself doesn't know what is this astro contract he himself doesn't know what is the mystery doctrine how will he think that this believer is need to be recover, recovered because he himself is not been recovered he says the good deeds the dead deeds the menstrual cloth works are enough for them to carry on and in enough for them to look but that is not the way you need to know the mystery doctrine of the church age you need to recover for the word of the lord you need to understand the source of information wherewith lord has kept us for his glory but we are not able to come to the truth the reasons are that we are not able to recover of the spiritual momentum the spiritual momentum at least some people are not even able to realize because they are still losers because a loser stops being a loser when he starts using rebound and begins to learn and relearn bible doctrine and until and unless you learn and relearn bible doctrine your recovery will never be done and your recovery until and unless it fails to get for the spiritual momentum you will never even come to know the spiritual condition in which the loser will find himself at the judgment seat of christ there is nothing to wait for and much to lose if the loser does not recover his personal inheritance of escrow blessings will remain undistributed unreceived and are kept in deposit in heaven forever at the resurrection of the church the loser will receive only his resurrection body and will enjoy perfect happiness in heaven but he will not receive his escrow blessings for eternity as told in 1 Corinthians 3:15 they will remain on deposit forever as a monument to lost opportunity and as undeniable evidence of god's grace in spite of man's negative volition so god is gracious even though you are negative so today is a time for you to recover to rebound to learn and to relearn bible doctrine because learning bible doctrine gaining spiritual momentum growing up in doctrine and attaining maturity is the only astro blessings for us in time because the ingredients of desiring for truth love for god strength of character remarkable stability perseverance motivation momentum and happiness is what the qualities of the inner person for the escrow blessings in time have been made and this discussion will continue and since the time is too short for me to conclude the tape the closing moments have been given to those who are without Christ without hope and without eternal life in order to believe and express in the privacy of the soul that as next to the volition of him to believe in Christ is next to the volition to him is eternal life if is not able to recite it if we are not able to get it by expressing the volition in Christ stating to the fact that he believes upon the lord that moment itself we shall have is eternal life and the discussion what we are learning about the mystery doctrine of the church age because answering back zakir mike is not a big deal for us 
but considering to the point of view, learning and applying the truth, knowing and understanding the word, and reaching to the status of spiritual maturity, the importance of the fifth phrase is what our spiritual life is all designed all about. And the way you neglect it, the way you reject it, the way you fail to take into consideration his word, shows forth your arrogant attitude, your, igno your ignorance followed by negligence, not to give top priority for Bible doctrine. And as we continue this in the day after tomorrow, after two days, we shall look in depth the subject of the words which Lord has kept and recorded for us. So, Father, we are grateful for the privilege that it us to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in the things that we have studied. As, Lord, you have given for us those things where we are, we, we are capable of understanding that the distribution of your spiritual wealth has been kept for us only when we recover and gain spiritual momentum. So, to this extension, may, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us and work in us those imperishable rewards of eternity, not this such kind of a useless things which are going to be easily thrashed out. To this extent, Lord, may Lord God all spit enlighten us.